Hello everyone, today we're going to be starting supplemental lecture videos, which are by no means a replacement for actually attending a lecture. So anyways, let's get started with basic Linux fundamentals, and more specifically, connecting to the lab machines using SSH. In order to connect to the lab machines using SSH, type in the following command shown on screen, and follow the instructions below. I've already typed in my SSH login, so let's hit enter. And as you can see, we're prompted for a UAlberta login password. This is the same one you would use for services like eClass and BearTracks. So type that in. And as you can see, we have successfully logged into the lab machines. So now we're going to show you some of the major Linux commands that you'll be constantly be using throughout your semester. So the very so on the left side, what I have is the Linux, okay? And the right side is the command line of this Mac, okay? So the very first um, command that we're going to check is called a PWD. So if I type PWD, it prints out the current directory that we are currently in, okay? So, uh, so right now we're in tilde. So what that means is we're in the home directory, okay? So this is the home. Now the next command is called the ls. So if I type ls, it shows me a list of items. But actually these items actually tells you all of the contents that we have within the home directory. So as you can see, we have desktop, music, public example school, and etc. So these all match everything in here. The next one um, is called a make directory. So what this does is this simply just creates a new folder within the directory. So that, so for example, I could do something like this, mkdir, okay, and we're going to call this folder my first, okay, and as, and as soon as you do this, you, you probably recognize that we have the folder called my first, and I could also check it by doing ls as well. So we have my first down here. Next one um, is to change directory. Okay, so this is same thing as double clicking on the folder. So if I want to go into um, the folder called my CS, okay, what we have to do is we do cd my underscore CS. Oh, so cd my CS. Okay, so now as you can see, I have the tilde still. Okay, but now I have my CS. So what this means is from the home directory, we just moved into the folder called my CS. Okay, so now if I want to go back to the home directory, um, one way is I could just simply type CD and enter. And yeah, and if I type LS again, it shows me this original list of, of things that we have. Okay, but another way to um, but another way to uh, go around is by doing cd dot dot. So what that does is it just goes to the previous directory that you were in. Now we have this another um, command called mv. So mv can do two things. It could rename a file. It could also uh, move a file to a, to a different directory. So the very first feature I want to show you is to um, how to move a file to a folder. So, um, suppose I want to move the, this folder called my first to my CS. So what I would do is I'll do mv, okay, and then type the folder name that I want to move. I want to move my first and the destination directory. So I want to move into my CS folder. So now as you can see from the Linux terminal, Okay, my first folder disappeared. And also, when I typed ls, my first also disappeared as well. Now, uh, now let's go into the my CS folder. So we do cd my CS. Okay, now we're in my CS and we type ls. And as you can see, I have these two programs. And I also have the folder called my first. So let's check that out in here as well. It should match. Okay, now I want to show you the second feature of the MV, which is to rename. So in order to rename a file, what I have to do is first I type MV, and then I type the file 
that I want to rename. So let's so let's say I want to rename first program.py. Okay, so I'll type first program.py. Okay, now I need to choose a new name. So let's call this second program.py. So once I do this, as you can see in the Linux, um, my uh, first program it, it no longer exists. Now we have second program. All, and if I do ls again, the change is also made. Now, the last command I want to show you is called the rm. Um, simply is known as remove. So um, to remove a file, okay, uh, suppose I want to remove of the file called hello.c. Okay, so I'll do rm and then type hello.c. And then if I sim so it's asking me um, whether if I want to remove it or not. So I'll type y and enter. So as you can see in the Linux terminal, it's gone as well. And if I check by doing ls, the uh, hello.c program also disappeared as well. Now, if I want to delete a folder, well, it doesn't really work as, as what we expected. Um, so in order to remove a folder, what we have to do is we need to do rm dash r, okay? And we write the folder name, so which is my first. And now it's asking me again, I type y and enter. And now your folder has just disappeared. So these are the major Linux commands that you'll be constantly be using, but there are also more Linux commands that, um, that you can look up as well. And that's all for today. Now, let's write a simple program in C, but first let's see what the equivalent code would be in a language that we're more familiar with, like Python. So I have a VS Code window open here with a very simple program where I'm defining a function called main, and this function does nothing, then we're calling main. Yeah, so as you can see, this is a very simple function that really does nothing. But let's see uh, what the equivalent code will be in C. As you can see, I have a C program open. And in here, we're defining a function called main. But as you can see, we're not calling it. And this is because every time we run a C program, it starts executing from the main function. Every C program must have a main function declared somewhere inside of it. So now let's kind of dissect this main function. As you can see, we start with int. Int is the return type. In C, we can only return a single value of a predefined type from any function. And what this is saying is that somewhere in our function, we're going to be returning an integer. Then we have main. Main is just the name of the function. Then we have these round brackets, and these round brackets are where our arguments would go if we had any. Then we have these squiggly braces. This defines our function body. So when we run a function, we're actually running all of the statements that are within these squiggly brackets. And then we see return, which is a keyword saying that we're returning a value back from a function. And we're returning 0. This is the integer that we were talking about. And in the main function, when we return 0, we're just returning a status message back to the operating system, telling it that our main function executed successfully. And then we have our semicolon. In C, every statement has to end with a semicolon. Now, we know what this function looks like, and we know its parts, but it really does nothing. So now let's have it do something. So in Python, if you wanted to do something like print a message, you would do something like this. And as you can see, it prints out hello world. C works a little bit differently. We do have a function that allows us to print messages to the terminal. It's called printf, and let's use it. And as you can see, it looks virtually identical to the one in Python, but instead of print, it's printf, and we put a semicolon at the end because it, it's also a statement. Now, we want to run the C program, but running a C program works a little bit differently than in Python. C has to be compiled 
into an executable before it can be run. And to compile a program, we need this compiler called GCC. To run GCC, just go to your terminal, type GCC, and then we write our flags. Flags are just like options telling the compiler how we want our program to be built. So we will be using two flags for every compilation of a program in this course. And these are dash wall and dash std equals c99. Note that the w in dash wall is capitalized. Uh, and what dash wall does is it enables all warnings. And then we have std equals c99, which just tells GCC what C standard we want to run. And the C standard that we want to use is C99. Then this is followed by the name of our source code file, followed by dash O. The dash O just tells GCC that we want to give our executable a name. And we'll call it hello. Okay. As you can see, when we try to compile this program, we get a warning. And it tells us how to fix it, and it actually does it by itself, because it's such a simple issue. But what is essentially happening here is that we're trying to use a function we don't have access to, which is this printf. In Python, a lot of functionality, like printing, is already included in the language. So you don't have to import any sort of file or any sort of package to do that. Or C works a little bit differently, because in C, a lot of functionality is in other files. So if we want to use something like printf, we have to include the file that printf is in. To include a file, you, you just type pound include, and inside of the angle brackets, you type the name of the file we want to include. So printf is in this file called stdio.h. So we must include that file in order to use printf. And now, as you can see, when I compile my program again, there are no warnings. So let's try running it. To run an executable, you have to type dot slash and then the name of the executable file. And as you can see, we do print out hello world, but the formatting is a little bit weird. And this is because we do not add a new line character. So in Python, when we run the print function, it automatically adds a new line at the end of our message. C or printf doesn't really do that. We actually have to add in these new lines manually. And to do that, you have to go to the part of your message where the new line should be inserted and then typing backslash n. And now let's save and run that. And as you can see, our program works as expected. We have now learned how to write a simple program in C.